presentation of this session. This comes from Keda Paulsen on behalf of her working group. Most of them are here, and it is about an adjecti adjective detector of poor Estonian. Please. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, we call ourselves the part of speech working group of the Institute of the Estonian language, and uh, Maria and Ene are here, but uh, Ahti, our computational linguist, uh, is not here. And uh, we are taking you back to some basic uh, issues of um, lexicographic work, that is uh, the categorization of uh, uh, lexical uh, phenomena. Um, and um, <coughs> we discussed the process of developing a multi-parameter application, the adjective similarity calculator. Uh, AEC that determines the re relative adjectivity of a word or a word form. And you can find the uh, prototype uh, on this um, uh, website uh, adgcalculator.pythonanywhere.com. And um, this tool relates the statistical summary of a word for or word forms corpus behavior. Uh, to the most typical and central aspects of the Estonian adjective, the adjectival uh, corpus profile. Um, the essence of the lexicographic problem uh, can be explained so that um, uh, within Estonian lexicography, uh, the part of speech uh, categorization is a part of the data model in Equilex. The dictionary writing system and lexicographic root database, uh, and um, this is the basis for the uh, institute's combined dictionary. And uh, um, that means that uh, uh, the Equilex database unites data from uh, 110 dictionaries and databases, and uh, uh, consequently uh, there are. Uh, candidates for headwords that uh, need uh, to provide to be provided with a proper part of speech label, and there are circa 1,500 new entries annually. Uh, but also, uh, as a result of the aggregating process of the individual dictionaries, there are about uh, 250,000. Uh, lexical records in the Equilex that uh, miss the part of speech tag. Now, so basically, lexicographers uh, deal with different types of decategorization issues uh, like grammaticalization and lexicalization. And our um, meta lexicographic survey from the year 2019 indicated uh, that. Um, Lexicographers need statistical roundups of corpus data for categorization of uh, lexeme candidates. So, large amount of raw data is not enough. Um, now, uh, let's concentrate on the adjective. Um, that is the second most frequent part of speech in Equilex database. So, there are uh, approximately 16% of uh, the uh, approximately 100,000 tagged records. And uh, according to our survey, uh, uh, it adjective is one of the most problematic uh, parts of speech. Uh, so uh, here you can see uh, the adjective with its uh, neighboring categories. And uh, this figure shows only the main classes overlapping with adjectives, which are known verb, uh, ad adverb and pronoun. A comprehensive uh, elaboration of the part of speech uh, ambiguity can be found in the article over uh, a typology of lexical ambiforms in Estonian. So, um, the main question we have is um, how to provide lexicographers with a corpus-driven knowledge about adjectivity of a headword candidate. Um, 
So basically, the question is how to make adjectivity measurable and uh, how to put it on a scale with uh, thresholds. Uh, there are, th we have had uh, four main requirements for creating uh, an uh, adjective similarity calculator application, which uh, firstly were uh, knowledge of the normal variation uh, within the patterns of adjectival behavior. Uh, that could work as benchmark for comparison. And uh, secondly, we need an established uh, scale of adjectivity uh, uh, that would specify the degrees of adjective-like behavior. So we basically apply a prototype uh, uh, theory uh, ideas here. And uh, thirdly, uh, there has to be a morphologically annotated corpus available for ret retrieving the frequency data of uh, selected patterns and lemmas. And um, uh, uh, finally, we need a script uh, that would retrieve stati statistics on the occurrences of the input words in the corpus patterns and uh, uh, calculating conformity assessment results. So we'll come back to these requirements. Mm. Firstly, the profile. Um, the corpus profile of, of adjectives um, consists of selected close context uh, morpho morphosyntactic uh, patterns that uh, are graspable in the corpus. And uh, we calculated the relative prominence of the patterns for each word each word in um, uh, the test group that consisted of uh, 100 prototypical adjectives um, that were randomly selected from the basic Estonian dictionary. And uh, the behavior, corpus behavior was um, studied uh, on the basis of the Estonian National Corpus 2019. Uh, and uh, the Estonian National Corpus are at accessible uh, via the sketch engines API. Uh, but the basis for the uh, calculator that we, we present here uh, is the newer corpus, Estonian National Corpus um, uh, 2021. And uh, the set script retrieving the frequency data from uh, the corpora is based on a set of query patterns. So here you can see the patterns uh, that are basically, uh, we, can, we can divide them in two types. There are attributive and non-attributive patterns. Um, um, firstly, the attribute pattern is a simply, simply a test word preceding a noun and uh, the sentence started pattern um, then uh, restricts uh, the uh, sentential um, position. So it has to be come at the be beginning of the sentence. Uh, then the non-attributive patterns, uh, firstly, we use the adverb pattern. Uh, that means we have a adverb uh, preceding the test verb. And, uh, and the second non-attributive pattern is the predicative pattern that um, uh, involves a, this uh, copula verb uh, olema that has to precede the test verb or also the adverb. So uh, the uh, adverbs we use are belong to a list um, that is compiled uh, using the sketch engine word list tool through which the 100 most frequent adjectives were extracted and the 30 most frequent adverbs for each of those adjectives uh, were selected. And uh, the adverbs with frequencies of 10 or more were included in the list. Uh, now, what is uh, the conformity assessment? Well, that is a method we have developed uh, for uh, assessing the adjectival uh, corpus profile and uh, 
uh, this helps us to evaluate the proxim proximity to the profile. Uh, so here we use the relative frequencies and um, uh, the basis here is the are the 100 uh, prototypical adjectives uh, and uh, their pattern frequencies in each pattern. And uh, uh, basically, uh, we, uh, this range is based on relative prominence of corpus pattern uh, has contrasted. And, and we have contrasted uh, the uh, uh, results of prototypical adjectives to participles, both uh, lexicalized and non-lexicalized, just to differentiate the uh, adjective, adjectival uh, behavior from non-adjectival. Uh, so here is uh, the scale of adjectivity. And uh, uh, it basically consists of five uh, degrees. So, um, uh, there are val values as 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And uh, let's, let's take a look on the actual analysis to exemplify the uh, uh, values. Um, firstly, uh, we have here an example uh, that is a prototypical adjective, uhke, mm, proud, that receives uh, uh, the highest uh, degree on the scale. And as you can see, it, um, it's basically a bi binary uh, assessment system. It either uh, performs um, uh, so that it, um, it, uh, uh, the result uh, is placed within the ranges or not. So UHKE um, uh, receives the highest value and uh, the ver uh, word HAIHTUV, vanishing, a uh, present uh, participle, uh, performs zero in predicative pattern. So it, uh, it is likely adjective. Mm. And UNITLETUD, congratulated, uh, has no uh, result in uh, attributive patterns and uh, we can label it as ambi ambiguous. Um, and uh, then the known here, mouse, receives only one uh, result in attributives in, in the sentence starter pattern and the verb oskama, to can or no, uh, actually receives zero. So it's very unlikely adjective. So here is uh, our interface. Uh, so you can uh, check it out on this um, uh, uh, address and uh, basically you can enter the base form of a word or a participle verb form and the calculator shows how adjective its behavior is on the Estonian National Corpus 2021 and the query may take a minute or two so we have to wait a little bit. <laughs> And the word here that um, uh, is analyzed is hell, which is uh, not any, doesn't mean anything hellish, but uh, actually means the opposite in Estonian, uh, gentle or tender. So it's proved to be very likely adjective. Now, how, how can we evaluate the uh, results? Um, we can assess the calculated calculator's output of both non-ambiguous and ambiguous uh, representatives of both adjectives and uh, the word classes overlapping with adjectives. Then we can compare the uh, decision, the results with the decisions made by lexicographers so far. And uh, we can also, of course, uh, examine the word's uh, corpus behavior. So now um, I present some examples that are either uh, prototypical adjectives or overlapping with nouns or verbs, that is participles, participle forms. And uh, let's start with the uh, prototypical adjectives. Mm. So here we have the 
uh, adjective uhke, meaning proud, that uh, is labelled as very likely adjective, and also inimlik human, also very likely adjective. Uh, and we also have here the uh, in, in uh, non-declinable uh, adjective wert, uh, worthy, that is also performs as very likely adjective. So that is quite uh, expectable. Uh, now I would like to show you two um, uh, actually very typical adjectives that uh, receive only ambiguous as a result. And uh, this was something uh, maybe not something we expected, but uh, something that shows uh, something about the Estonian adjective as um, um, uh, this is a, a this is a phenomenon that is not very uh, studied in Estonia or known that uh, also Estonian adjectives as for instance English adjectives can uh, incline to either the attributive or the predictive uh, behavior. Uh, so, such a differentiation is in identified in other languages, but uh, to our knowledge, knowledge not yet been investigated in Estonian. So, we can have used this uh, calculator to, to learn something about language as well. Uh, now, let's take a look at some adjectives interfacing with nouns. For instance, um, uh, the word vuras that uh, can have reading uh, as a strange, an adjective, or stranger. And uh, another uh, adjective that has received the adjectival um, label quite recently, so it's um, moved from a known to, to also an adjective. And um, so these words represent productive patterns of nominalization and adjectivization. And uh, the results are then that Vuras is a very likely adjective and Lemmik uh, is uh, uh, actually ambiguous. So uh, uh, this uh, word uh, does match only half of the patterns and apparently this it is not, uh, does not yet uh, behave fully as an adjective. And now um, to nouns uh, that uh, score uh, highly on some adjectival patterns. Uh, so here you can see the noun school that is frequently used as a genitive attribute. Uh, for instance, a school's teacher. So. Uh, this explains the high results on the attributive patterns. And the abstract nouns um, can be used predicatively, like this is just love, so that explains the high results on the non-attributive patterns. And now the target category participles. So here you can see uh, uh, the uh, past and present uh, participles, participle form of the verb hope, uh, lotma. And uh, as you can see, the higher uh, uh, results, likely adjective, uh, belong to the present participle impersonal and past participle impersonal that uh, can be verified on the corpus that uh, this, these are quite adjectival. And uh, Finally, some examples of participles uh, that uh, represent the extremes of the scale, like encouraging, inspiring, that could be uh, uh, considered as a uh, dictionary entry. And uh, uh, here is an interesting result of uh, the form kohustatud, um, oblique to, and uh, this one uh, receives zero in all uh, patterns, but uh, note 
noticed the very high result actually in the predicative pattern, which is uh, a result of the overuse of this form in one particular uh, construction. So, uh, the results indicate that the application works as intended. So, the rates of the words that are clearly non-adjectival fall into the lower interval in the similarity assessments and uh, the ratings uh, uh, of cases that can be expected to behave to some extent, uh, some extent adjectively fall into the upper interval. And um, uh, exceptions prove the rule and uh, this is also uh, the case here that there are uh, exceptions also among among normal adjectives uh, that is the adjectives that prefer either attributive or predicative constructions there are other constructions overlapping with patterns of the adjective profile like the genitive attribute that we saw an example of the call and constructions clustering around copula verb that uh, may interfere with the results. And of course, the results uh, depend on the quality of the tagging system. And we haven't taken into account the semantic dimension of adjectives. Um, so, but we can conclude that uh, the calculator calculates the relative salience or the instances of patterns and compares the values to the ranges of adjectival behavior as we wished. And it also provides the outcome both in terms of numerical measures and verbal labels. And it can be used to explore the syntactic behavior of any word, actually. And um, so corpus data, data can be used to establish the prototypical behavior of a uh, lexical category. And um, we can also conclude that the patterns uh, constituting the profile work in combination. So we need uh, all of them. Um, thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? or comments? Uh, so, do you also have uh, patterns for other parts of speech? Uh, well, we, we haven't uh, have no patterns for other part, parts of speech yet, but uh, this, these results actually, I think it uh, encourages to work towards this um, direction. But it also depends on the parts of, part of speech, um, uh, how it works. So we, and the lexicalization and uh, grammaticalization patterns. So for instance, uh, a category as known, at least in Estonia, uh, it, there uh, is more, may, maybe more, um, uh, uh, natural to go from the uh, form distribution uh, uh, direction as we have done. <laughs> we have worked also worked out also a uh, a calculator of uh, based on the normal uh, uh, form distribution. So when a word form has uh, uh, goes over this um, normal distribution, then it is a good sign for a lexicographer to look closer at the instance, uh, whether it actually has uh, lexicalized. Uh -huh. yeah. Thank you, Geda. Uh, what do you think is the possibility to get get out from this uh, calculator a list of adjectives that are not uh, concluded, included in the dictionary. And they, uh, so they maybe have to be included into, into the dictionary as they are uh, likely adjectives. So, uh, do you mean, uh, how, how can we tell apart? This, or? Uh, or ca can you get the list of this kind of uh, words oh, that should without be? Part that of should speech. Be, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Well, I think uh, our calculators are calculators are good indicators that something is going on, but uh, uh, I would say that it needs uh, the lexicographer needs to um, take a look at it. So I wouldn't uh, lead the list the words from the list automatically to the like to or to add the uh, label of. Uh, for instance, adjective. Uh, so, I, I think uh, lexicographers are needed <laughs> to to qualitatively look at uh, cases like this. Okay, we have one more question. Are the parts of speech needed? I mean, if uh, there is difficulty in determining whether uh, a particular word is uh, an adjective, then what is the benefit of determining that is it's an adjective well it's uh, perhaps the human nature to <laughs> put a label on things <laughs> it's one thing and uh, well there is also this very practical reason as uh, the uh, lexi lexicon that has uh, uh, categorized uh, goes uh, it, it also improves the results of uh, morpho analysis so it's uh, it's a very practical use actually <laughs> i think do you want to follow up yes i mean the borderline cases like uh, lena's favorite example uh, memory stabigata uh, loss would be uh, husband out of uh, uh, pilot uh, so a uh, noun form functions as an adjective and uh, is there any real benefit in including in the dictionary information that uh, this particular case of this particular noun can sometimes function as an mm. adjective? I think there is. Uh, it is useful at least for more uh, language uh, where people people that are more aware about language and interested in how words uh, function so even the sub uh, meanings that uh, uh, may have different labels so it, it tells something about how about the words uh, behavior thank you so much uh, unfortunately we are out of time now so thank you <laughs>